Okay, it's been a few months, well, almost a year now since the Intel B580 was released, and I can tell you it's been a really interesting journey. It has improved since we look at this guy. It's good, but then you get this. And then you got that one too. Bruh. But it's still good. It's better boys. We can get some decent experience now with the Intel B580. However, there's still some quirks, right? So we're gonna revisit this card today. And we're gonna run it in a lot of games that most people don't play. Well, the games that I play anyway. But before that, this video is brought to you by AliExpress. Now they're running another sale right now. And for this video, we're using a cheap NVMe that we got from AliExpress. Now, considering that everything is very expensive now in terms of RAM, or storage because of AI. Yes, thank you, Skynet. Yeah, you could find alternative products from AliExpress. Now, for this test, we have a cheap MVME, Kotion. I think that's the word, the Kotion. Yes, it's not the best, but it has decent speeds and it's good enough for gaming. So, if you want to buy any of that or any processors or any items, I've got a link in the description and you've got some sales code right here. Anyway, let's go back to our testings and let's revisit our B580 as I've mentioned. We're going to run this in multiple games and we're going to run it at 1440p resolution with realistic settings and we're going to pair it with the Ryzen 7600 to keep it realistic because I could pair 9800X3D with a Intel B580, right? Let's start with Battlefield because yeah, I've been stuck in this game for like a long time. Like a really long time, boys. I've been playing this game hard. But anyway, our B580 in Battlefield 6, 4040p, we've been able XEXS in here. They're upscaling, right? And set it to quality settings. And look at that one, boys. It's really good. 120 FPS on a really good, really big map. And we're able to hit our shots. And there's not even like status, right? This is a good experience. And this is considering that we're just using the uh, Ryzen 7600. Let's move on to another shooter. Warzone. Yes, Warzone boys is actually pretty good as well. Look at that one, right? Average FPS is about 138 and the lows are pretty good too. This is actually quite a decent card. Look at that one, 99% utilization on our GPU. Our P580 is quite good. We're running 44P with basic, you know, competitive settings here. XCS is as well. Ultra quality uh, preset on the upscaling. Let's go to another shooter, Delta Force, okay? Look at that one boys, right? Really good. FP is as well. And you can see this one, right? It's actually a good experience now with this card. Well, mostly. As I've said, we still got some close quirks, but in this one, Delta Force at 1440p with XCS is at quality settings. We're running about 130 FPS. 140 FPS. The lowest yes, there are some a little bit of status there. However, it is still a good experience. I'm quite happy with this guy so far. Let's move on to another shooter. Much slower pace this time. And that's PUBG. Right, this one, boys. We're still getting really good FPS as well. You look at the utilization, right? 99% utilization with competitive settings at 1440p. 170 FPS. The lows are not bad as well. 120. It's a really good card. Let's move on to another shooter. Yeah, brother, what's up with all the shooters, man? Usually you start with single player games. Well, I just feel like shooters today. Like I said, I've been stuck in Battlefield for like a long time. Okay, bro. Okay. What's the next shooter? Arena Breakout Infinite. A free extraction shooter. And look at this one, please. Bang. This is Valley. This is the biggest map in um, Arena Breakout Infinite. And we're getting decent FPS as well. It's quite smooth. 130 FPS. Lows are 109 we're able to get our kills there you know frag some people loot their stuff and i know the the power gpu power is here is probably not accurate because we have to read it differently for intel i don't have that metric in here but a gpu utilization is actually really high with this card now that we've done all our fast paced shooters let's move back to our single player games because you know who doesn't like single player games let's start with cyberpunk 2077 this is ultra boys at 1440p we did enable upscaling in here look at this one we're running 80 fps yes it's not the smoothest right there are some micro status in here but it is okay this is a single player game we're just going to enjoy the ride here 80 80 fps lows are about 59 but it is okay this is a, a single player game let's look up to another single player 
player game. Oblivion Remastered. I like this game, right? We've got medium settings in here, 44p with XCSEs at quality. Is there uh, still some micro status? I think they've fine tuned this game. However, we're still getting like those status, which is normal for Oblivion. 60 FPS in here, 40 plus uh, on the lows. However, when we get into the dungeon, as you can see in here, it's actually a better experience. We're running about 90 now uh, FPS and about 80 FPS on the lows. Now we're gonna look at um later on we're gonna look at the scaling as well we're gonna see if the 1080p and 1440p there is like a difference between the two because there was an issue about this some time ago and boys just a quick intermission if you have any questions regarding our like this or any comments just put it down in the comment section i will try to answer them uh, recently I've, I've been answering them on our shorts feed so if you want to see all of that it's in the shorts feed the chance uh, i probably have answered some of your questions in there so if you haven't just subscribe it will show in your short speed okay let's move on to our competitive shooters other competitive shooters okay and first up boys is fortnite the simpsons fortnite and we have here performance mode but this time around we're running performance mode on dx12 because that's more like the new performance mode now and look at that one boys 280 200 plus fps the lows are about 130 fps so it's not bad still over 240 fps on your raw right the lows can be better but yeah it's fortnite it's good enough right there are micro status in there but it's good enough and you do get about like 300 fps sometimes right it's performance mode how about we move on to uh valorant so valorant's another like high fps game so obviously it's more like c you demanding rather than gpu however in this case we're at 40 for the p competitive settings right you do get those status in there but this is valorant as a whole yeah we're still getting about 300 fps that didn't didn't enable like the a one percent low metrics in here and the reason behind that is there are a lot of fix in valorant like when you go through a buy setting it will just tweak it all out so i just left it like raw fps in here and we're still getting like what like 500 fps on, on certain um areas right if we get into this busy shots and yeah, it does drop to about 300 plus. It's still good enough. Let's move on to our hero shooters now. As always, we'll start up with Marvel Rivals. And yes, I have changed our hero here now. I used to like bring Wolverine, but now we're Skylord. I think it's Skylord. Right? Yeah, yeah, Skylord, because I, I kept dying with Wolverine. <laughs> at least with this one, we're, we're getting some frags. And look at that one, 120. Yeah, I did notice that you suck at that one, bro. Yeah, man, that's why I gave up. And uh, we're at Skylord now. Okay, happy. All right, anyway, we're getting about 120 FPS in here. Average FPS about 114, right? The lows are 83. But yeah, it's it's competitive settings at 1440p with XCSEs at ultra quality uh, upscaling. Let's move on to Apex Legends. This one, boys. Here we go. Apex Legends. Look at that one. 99% utilization. It's, I just love this game, right? We're so much optimized in this one. And we're at 14 foot people. Competitive settings. Still getting really high FPS. Like 200 plus FPS, boys. And the lows are 165. You can't hit those like maximum FPS. But it is good enough. Okay? It is good enough. It is doable. Let's try a different game. This time around. Make a break. Because, yeah. You know, when if you feel like a, a mech pilot, right? I have been playing this game some time ago and i really like this game bro i think i know why you like this game right it's the view oh, like that view yeah. yeah that view that view is a bonus yeah right man i know what you're saying yeah look at this one boys so yes we do get some status in here that it's really heavy right there's like a lot of action in here it's a very fast like mech game it's all about timing and shooting in here there are a little bit of status in here but not uh, they're not like game breaking um we're getting about 160 fps the lows are half than that though however even considering that we can still get some kills here i'm i'm bringing a leastness in here which is a melee and like a, a range more like a versatile fighter in here doesn't really excel anything but we're able to get some kills in here which is actually quite good but i was struggling i will i was going to struggle in this game now we are only in dx11 in here uh the dx12 for this game is limited to higher in card so in this case we have dx11 low uh running at xcs is upscaling again 
at 1440p. Let's move down to our PVE game. And first up is Helldivers 2. And once again, we are medium settings, right? We're starting out with medium settings at 1440p. Super Helldive difficulty. As always, now we've got a lot of bugs in here. And our FPS is actually not that high um, when you're playing Helldivers 2 at medium settings. That's about like, what, 60 FPS? Not that good, right? Not that good. Although your utilization, once again, is at 99. You fully utilize the GPU in here. You can get um, higher FPS by dropping the settings. So we did drop that to low, which improve our gaming experience. Now you're getting about 90 FPS in here, 98 average FPS. It's a, it's a good experience in here. As, as always, we are on support health dive in here. There's a lot of bugs in here, a lot of terminated bugs, and we're just throwing some of um, our um, stratagems in here. Fiber KG, bro, drop that there, drop that there. Pretty good experience, pretty good experience with health divers too. I would probably stick with like low settings in here, 40, 40 our next pve game is uh Pad of xl2 here we go Pad of xl2 as you know is a very cpu intensive game alongside also gpu intensive so we're starting out with the highest well the uh, default high settings in here at 1440p we did enable upscaling in here I'll talk more about that later on. However, in this case, right, we've got upscaling and then you do get like really bad FPS in here. And that's because like, it's just GPU demanding and CPU demanding at the same time. So not a good experience. So we did drop our settings even further with a lot of um, mobs, right? And a lot of effects in here. Frame times will suffer. I think in this instance, you may be better just playing it at 1080p. And, and this is probably like when you've got a lot of these swaps, like look at this page, right? If I have ice spells in here, and this is the reason why I use ice spells is because it's just going to be really intensive for the GPU. And bang, look at the frame times, boys. You can feel how slow it is, right? Look at that, just slow thing. Like before we proceed, let's talk about scaling. I'm going to look at 1080p and 1440p and see how our Intel B580 performs because this was an issue back then. Let's start with Cyberpunk and this is 1080p native ultra against 1440p ultra and you can see that there is a difference there in terms of um, performance when you go to 1440p whereas before according to uh, other um, outlets you would you wouldn't see much difference in here or there would be some issues however in this case it scales quite properly let's have a look when we have um, upscaling 1080p against like 1440p with upscaling and you can see that yeah there is a little bit of difference in here right obviously you still get slightly better experience with the 10. How about if we look at like DX11 game and I, I wouldn't go through every other game in here so we're just going to quickly look at like PUBG because this game scales very well. In here we're both GPU ball neck and from 1080p to 1440p you can definitely see that there is like a, a difference in performance right? Yep you would get about 250 FPS in our 1080p while you're getting about 180 FPS as we increase our resolution they have done a lot of work in terms of scaling at the issues of the b580 because it still has issues so let's start with variable refresh right settings so we do record um the gameplay here with a capture card on a dedicated pc there's no, there's no performance loss right however if you enable like that variable refresh right uh, you know that setting like it causes this like random black screens or like when recording and you can see that it is also affecting the frame times you can see on the gameplay here you can fix this by just basically disabling this one on the intel driver another issue that i've noted delta force also has a weird bug with our intel b580 now when i run this game for the first time it picked up the ryzen igpu as the gpu instead of the intel b580 i had to manually go into the settings and change it to the intel b580 before it picked up now i did try to restart the computer and see if it will ultimately pick up the intel b580 it doesn't right, not a big deal but uh, good to know now the biggest issue that i found out so far 
with our Intel B580 is in Path of Excel 2. So in Path of Excel 2, obviously you have different upscaling technology integrated in here. You got NISAs, which is the default, and you got FSR, obviously, and then XCSEs and DLSEs. Obviously, DLSEs is only available for NVIDIA cards. XCSEs, because this is an Intel card, right? You, you won't automatically assume like, oh, yep, now I'll just enable XCSEs as our um, upscaling here. So I do, I do enable that just for anti-aliasing. And I don't enable like any like uh, upscaling. I just use it for anti-aliasing, right? So it doesn't make sense that we would pick um, XCSS, right? Because it's Intel technology. But then you get this black screen. Can't see anything, bro. You know, I, I can't see anything that one, man. And I can't see anything. The only fix that I found is not to pick XCSS. So if you don't pick XCSS as your like anti-aliasing or your upscaling, then you wouldn't have an issue. Which is ironic because this is an Intel GPU. The Intel B580 definitely has improved compared to when I first tried this GPU out. It had a lot of bugs. I'm so glad that Intel has fixed those, especially GPU scaling. Man, that was a really big thing for me back then. I just hope that Intel will see these bugs and fix it in the upcoming uh, driver updates because I think they're, they're doing a really good job with how they kept the, the drivers. Would I recommend um, Intel B580? I think if you could get it at a decent price, yeah, a few things in there are minor and there's that just one big one with um, Path of Excel 2. But apart from that, it's okay. Okay, and I could definitely recommend it to people who are confident on tinkering around. What do you think? Are you willing to try it out?